Folks, it's night time here at the house. And I've been over here with this little flat iron right here, this little griddle, trying to clean it up and get this thing reseasoned. I brought it here from the U.S. This belonged to my grandparents. I'm telling you how old this old thing is right here. Man, it is cooked a lot. Got it cleaned up pretty good there. There's a little bit of dark stuff that was sitting there really hard. But man, that's just like seasoning. But the main thing, there's no rust or nothing like that. Cleaned up pretty good. I've been uh, over here burning in some good olive oil into it, kind of getting it seasoned back in. I thought, you know why I'm seasoning this up? There's something I've been wanting, and it'd be the perfect thing to cook while I'm trying to get this little old flat iron all back seasoned up good. And right here is what it is. I'm gonna make up some tortillas, some flour tortillas. So that's what I thought I'd whip up here right now. I'm missing eating a little bit of Mexican food. Bring stuff from the U.S. here, all kinds, especially taco sauce, lots of taco sauce. Uh, probably three different brands. I think there's some more hidden here somewhere. But we bring stuff like chili. You can use that always for some Mexican food. Refried, refried beans, you can always use that. We got a lot of these cans. This isn't the only ones. Uh, red enchilada sauce. Green chili sauce, enchilada sauce right there. We got stuff to make tamales. We got jalapeno peppers. Man, we got all kinds of ingredients. We could whip up uh, some good little old Mexican food or Tex-Mex food with, as well as all kinds of other seasonings here and different types of peppers and all we can include too. So I thought, man, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna make me up a batch of tortillas. And I might just stand here and just whip out a bunch of them and uh, stack them up in a pot and cover them up. Once they cool off, I may put some in some Ziploc bags and freeze them. Man, I just really enjoy having me some tortillas and make you can just make so many different things with them. Right now, a little, little basic ingredients here I'm using for making these tortillas. Of course, some all-purpose flour, a little bit of baking powder, some salt, and some extra virgin olive oil. And that's the method I'm gonna be whipping these up here tonight. Um, this right here, this is three cups of all-purpose flour. This is one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one third of a cup here in just a bit after I get this mixed together good of extra virgin olive oil or any other kind of uh, vegetable oil but you wanna make sure it's not nothing. It has too much flavor like coconut oil. It's gonna change the flavor of the tortillas. So you kind of wanna stay away from using palm oil or coconut oil. But just plain vegetable oil or regular olive oil, I think that's the way to go. Well, this is what I'm gonna do right now and we'll see here in a bit how these turn out. Now I've already been rolling this together some here before I turn the camera on, so it's already actually really mixed up pretty good. So at this point in time, I'm gonna add this uh, olive oil in here, and then I'm gonna start blending it together. Now another little item that you gotta add in there, very important item, is a cup of warm water. You probably don't want boiling water, you don't wanna start trying to cook itself, but a nice cup of warm water so got this little heating pot here got it got it going won't take this thing just a minute and it'll have me some water heated up and uh, we're gonna add that in there also the olive oil before we start kneading this all together we're just right over where that olive oil was just in there that could have helped clean that little old cup up there we go one cup Pour that on in there now, and we'll go folding it together. So here we go right here. I got it kind of all rolled together. And when you start seeing it make these little clumps like this right here, that's when you got it just about right. And don't overwork it, just stop right there for the moment. Put this to the side. I'm gonna clean up some of these ingredients here and put away where I got a little workspace. And uh, we'll get on to the next thing. 
you want to do here now is you want a little surface to work on and roll these out. And we got this glass top table here in the kitchen. And it is a great working surface here. You know, I say kitchen, I'm, I'm living in a garage. We're building our home right here, right now on the beach. And we've been living in the garage that was built first for the house. Yeah, we built it in the beginning. We turned it into a temporary little apartment here. There's a doorway right there outside, it's a roll up garage door. We took all the stuff out of our old home. Um, vent a hood, stove, some cabinets and sinks. Those are just plastic cabinets, a little granite countertop. We tiled the floor in here, make it look more like a house. So when I say my kitchen, my garage kitchen. Anyway, you wanna flower up your little work area here. Then you wanna take this and you wanna dump it out. Make sure you got all your ingredients and you wanna start kneading this together. Really working it and folding it and kneading it together. Tell you what, I can just knead this right here with one hand right now. And uh, talk to you guys here a little bit while I'm doing this. So the reason I'm doing this here for the you that don't know, you maybe never seen any of my videos before, and this maybe just popped up on something in your list on YouTube. I'm an American from Texas, born and raised in Texas, and I am married to a beautiful little Filipina lady named Melinda, and we divide our life between the U.S. and the Philippines, where she's from but we really find that we enjoy our life a whole lot more here in the Philippines. There's nothing wrong with Texas. I absolutely love Texas. But at this point in my life and um, limited of the people and all around you there, you know, everybody's kind of like in their own thing so much in the U.S. these days. I really enjoy the energy and the vibe here in the Philippines. So, of course, there's dishes and food that I enjoy from the U.S., especially there in Texas. We're near the border of Mexico. That's our neighbor. Uh, Texas was part of Mexico before, and we share a lot of cuisine. So, in Texas, we have Tex-Mex, which is its own kind of style and flavor of twist on Mexican food. Some people think that Tex-Mex is Mexican food, but it is Tex-Mex. It's its own twist. If you went down on uh, the border or south of the border down in the heart of Mexico, you're not going to find much of those same dishes that you do right there in Texas. But I like it all. Spent some time down in Mexico as well and to get a really good, authentic Mexican food is a treat amongst itself. So, you're here in the Philippines like I am, you're limited on where you're gonna find those things. Even though they shared a culture with Spain, the same as Mexico did, and several hundred years of being underneath Spanish rule, uh, people here with the same names as in Mexico, the Gonzaleses and the Hernandezes and the Garcias and all of those names, um, they did not pick up a whole lot of the same cuisine. They, they just didn't. And uh, that's really surprising. Both uh, countries geographically around the uh, earth are kind of the same of where they are, you know, near the equator and and uh, tropical and all. Uh, a lot of the same foods will grow in both places. But the Philippines still has its own thing, its own identity. Now there are some dishes like adobos and uh, leche flan and things like that that they do share together. Absolutely. But on the most part, uh, no, they don't. So you know, you don't have to sacrifice and just be without like we are here. We bring some ingredients from back home, some basic spices and seasonings and stuff. And over time, we learn how to source those even here in this country. 
and we can kind of step on up and bring those foods into our home uh, and still enjoy those things. We just have to make it ourselves, a little effort ourselves. And we treat ourselves to those things like Melinda, she's got really good at uh, making tamales. She did even a better job in, in Texas back there making some tamales than she did here the last time, but she was busy trying to teach some sister-in-laws and kids how to help her do it. But uh, nevertheless, they were still really, really good. Um, other things that we'll cook is some Cajun dishes of different kinds. Uh, we really like Cajun food. Melinda, when she come to the U.S., she really liked having the choices of so many different flavors of Italian foods and just all the things. And she would quickly come home and teach herself real fast how to make those dishes. Now, of course, she says we can make it at home, we can save money. And that's not always true because sometimes you can spend more cooking up something at home than uh, going out and eating if you have to go buy a whole lot of ingredients. But it was just something pleasurable for her, something enjoyable, and she was really good at it. Man, jambalayas and just so many different dishes that Melinda just absolutely nailed. I know people that's been trying to cook some of those dishes for years and was a fail. And uh, Melinda just nails it right off from the beginning. She's really got a flair for cooking. She absolutely does. There you go. It's been kneaded together really good. And uh, now I'm gonna break this up into little balls. One hand operation here. But I'm gonna break this up in the little balls. About the size you're gonna to need to roll a tortilla out. You really wanna roll these out kinda of thin, at least that's the way I like them, thin, and uh, they seem to cook up better. But now one of the things that you probably wanna do, you make these up, is let them rest. Don't be in too big a hurry on it. So don't try to just roll it out immediately. Uh, give this time. I'm gonna make all these little balls of dough. Each one represents a tortilla. And then I'm gonna get them all sitting right here and I'm gonna let them all have a rest. And that should let the glutens um, separate there and it makes it actually roll out a whole lot better. If you start rolling it out and it seems really hard to roll and really trying to snap back, you know, like a lot of elastic to it, um, just stop and let it rest even longer. It may even take up to 30 minutes or so. That was a little too big. And uh, then try it again. But you don't have to be in a real big hurry. Just take your time. So I'm gonna let these sit here and rest. I'm gonna go ahead and give them about like 10, 15 minutes. So I got my little, my little pan right here heated up. I made one here already. It is uh, just to get this thing with the temperature set right, and I'm ready to throw another one on. Now I tell you, I'm not. The, I'm doing this one-handed, so I might get it all crooked on here. Bear with me. Well, I didn't get it rolled out the most perfect circle, but there it is, right there. I'm trying to get the heat set just right. Should take about one minute on uh, each side. Actually about one minute on one side and it'll start bubbling like that right there. See those bubbles coming up? And within a minute, it should be ready to flip over. So you see them little bubbles coming up right there? Give her a flip, man, that is just perfect right there. Perfect, perfect. And I need to get on over here to the next. Folks, I got this down like a well-oiled machine now. Yes, I do. I can throw that underneath there in just a minute. Well, I'm stacking them up. I done got me a bunch in here. There's the little bubbles you're looking for out there. Look at that right there, boy. It may not be no perfect circle. But they are doing right. 
Well, look at that pocket. I'm just saying, mmm, I wish I had some honey inside of me. Some butter and some honey. Go up nowhere for a second. You gotta keep on this, folks. that right there you see it looking like that it's almost ready beautiful absolutely beautiful look at all these well I mean I've got me a big old stock of them in here and that one it's ready Folks, there it is. I got me a nice warm pot of tortillas. I saved the last one out. May not be no perfect circle, but I'm not worried about that. This ain't a beauty contest. That is a nice little tortilla right there. Light. And got my little pan all seasoned back in good too. Man, about two more rounds like that on it, and it is gonna be righteous. So uh, I'm gonna baby this in the house. Try not get mel cooked fish or nothing on it that absorbs that flavor into the cast iron, but this would be great in here cooking up a little bit of bacon or ham or frying an egg, things like that. Just I'm gonna ask you not to throw any like fish type dishes in there or stuff like that. Use regular skillet. But boy, I'm happy to have the griddle and I'm happy to have one of these tortillas. I guess it's time. Give it a little taste. Mmm. That is spot on. That is spot on. Now come tomorrow, I got me a pot full of tortillas. I might me something to go with it. I might uh, roll me up some little like chicken burritos or something like that. Hope you enjoyed this and just remember whatever kind of food you like and us as expats here in a foreign land, whatever country you're in, you can make it. Most time the ingredients are out there. Even the spices, learn what's inside of those things and you could probably source those spices and put together like a taco seasoning or different things like that. Well, there it is. It's another day of expat life of a foreigner living in a foreign land. See you on the next one.